Replit Deployments is brand new, and it's a much more professional way of sharing your work with a wider audience. But just what is it and how does it work? Join me as we talk about Replit Deployments. So you may have read this blog post. Replit Deployments, it's the fastest way to go from idea to production because it separates the development environment from the production environment. And that means you can mess around the code to your heart's content without your end user seeing any difference until you click push. And this is the big difference from always on. Replit's built-in web serving and always on features have always been a good way to get people to use your apps or your web services. But what it hasn't had is the consistency of always being available. It hasn't been separated from your development environment. So if you needed to go into it to make changes, people using it would see those changes happening live and see the bugs introduced as you went. But also the VMs would occasionally need to restart. And this caused problems for things like web services. Think about it this way. With Replit deployments, you can mess around with the code in your REPL to your heart's content, build in that next major release version of your app. But your users and your customers see the previous version, the version without the bugs, the version that's still working perfectly well, until you're happy with your development version and push it out to production. These two separate areas mean that your end user never sees your work in progress development and only sees a polished product. It also removes some of the hassle from having to do any work because you don't need to finish in a good place at the end of a coding session. So let's see how it works. I'm gonna go and create a new Python REPL and I'm gonna make it private just so you can see that it works in that way. And I'm just gonna build a really simple Flask website. Well. I'm not going to build it. Ghostwriter is going to build it for me. So I'm going to build a very simple countdown timer to my birthday, which clearly is going to be something that I'm going to have many millions of visitors to see. Put that code in, we'll click run, and the REPL will start, and it'll start serving up the website there. Now, of course, this is the old way of hosting. This is the free way of hosting. If I were to send anybody to that URL here, they're going to see this page. But the problem is that the moment that I make a change, let's say I'm doing some debugging, I want to add some color in here, I want to add a heading, and I rerun it, ah, now I've made a mistake there. I need to go and fix that. If at this moment somebody was on my website, they'd see that damaged work in progress version, which is not something that I really want them to see. Well, let's reset that back to where it was and let's see how deployments work. We've got a new button at the top right of our REPLs which says release and we've got an option to deploy the project. I'm going to click deploy and it's going to show me what kind of plans I can use. Now at the cheapest level, which would be ideal for this sort of project, which is more of a statically hosted website, you're getting half a CPU for 40 cycles a day. You can even go down a little bit to just 20 cycles per day model if you want to. But we go all the way up to dedicated for CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAMs for really intense processes. I'm gonna go for the cheap one. You can see it's telling me how much it will cost me a month and I'm gonna click purchase and deploy. So once purchased, it double checks to make sure that I've got all my refills on just in case, because I don't want my website hosting to go off. And I'm gonna click deploy. Now it gives me options to change the primary domain. I'm gonna try and change it to this, davidsbirthday.replit.app. And of course, you can connect it to your own domain later once it's been deployed. You could even put a build and a run command if you'd like, if you need that to work. So you can add extra things and you can add your environmental variables. This is really important if you're doing something in AI and you need your open AI key or a bunch of other secrets that you wouldn't necessarily want your end users to see in the running code. You've also got the option to choose between a web server or a background worker. Now a background worker is ideal for things like Slack or Discord bots. That's code that's just gonna be running but not necessarily serving up a UI. Let's click deploy and see what happens next. So it starts by syncing the file changes and then starts provisioning and building its own virtual machine. This means that my code is gonna be running on its own independent virtual machine and it's being built according to my instructions now. Now this process takes a little bit of time, so I'll speed it up here so we're not sat here staring at spinners. 
but you'll see it's telling us everything that's happening as it's creating it and as it's building out your hosting. And actually what it's doing here is quite a big job. It's spinning up an entire virtual machine and server in the cloud for us in the background, which is pretty cool. So we're getting deployment successful there. It took about three minutes to go from finished code to fully deployed site. So let's go and visit it. And you'll see there nicely counting down to my birthday. But let's work through a sensible workflow. Now I would like to update this. We've got the hosted version and we can still look at our development version from the web view and open this. That's what this is here. You'll see that the development version ends in REPL.co, whereas the deployed version ends in REPL.app. And that's a big difference because REPL.app is where you'll send your users and REPL.co is where you'll go for your own development purposes. Let's make a change and see what happens. So I think this wording is a bit naff. I'm just going to have a party emoji and that's it. If I stop and run my server again, you'll see that my update has worked. And if I go out to my REPL.co, my live development version, and I reload it, you'll see I get that version. But back on my server, back on my deployment, if I reload that, I'm getting the original version that I deployed. Nothing's changed here. And this is wonderful because if I make any mistakes in my code, if I am halfway through developing a feature and I have to go and do something, if the feature is going to take me many, many weeks, I can do that development on the development server now and only push to production when I'm ready. That's a really simple process as well. If I'm done and I want to push my changes out, I just need to click redeploy at the bottom. Click the deploy button again. It'll sync the file changes and we'll go through that process of building, bundling and deploying our de and deploying our deployment once again. Of course, you can also link your actual domain names to it. That's very, very simple. And it's a nice, easy process. You can also see a history of your deployment as well as detailed logs of everything that's happened for debugging purposes. And you're even able to destroy your hosting subscription if you're done with it and you don't want it anymore. So deployments are amazing. They allow you to develop your code and present your code to your users and your customers in two very different environments. You've got your development environment and your production environment. And only you get to decide when code you've built is good enough to go to production. Deployments on Replit are a massive step forward for us. Why don't you go and try them out with your next product?